Welcome to Wellbeing Wednesdays, coming to you from the Tulane University Counseling Center. I am Shauna Foose, one of your hosts. And I am Dr. Janaki Flint, one of the other hosts. <laughs> I'm so happy to have you all joining us today. We're really excited for today's program. We're going to um, spend some time with our panel talking about um, the Counseling Center's community engagement efforts. Um, we have really revamped and um, made some changes and we wanted to share that with everyone in the community. Janaki, do you want to talk a little bit more about uh, what community engagement is and how, how we're approaching it this year? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Thank you. So community engagement in, in, its, in its usual form is just a form of outreaching to a community, providing information, resources, um, and any other uh, connections that the community may be in need of. And when we talk about that from the standpoint of the counseling center, it is about bringing mental health programming, resources, emotional wellness programs into the campus community as part of this global campus community of care. So being able to help students with healthy problem solving or healthy um, help seeking behaviors, giving them education about mental health topics and issues and trends and making them feel uh, as if we are an open space and uh, a place where they can come to discuss some of these things that may be problematic for them on campus or to help them to thrive on campus, to completely abolish mental health stigma. Uh, so to provide students with all the resources and education they need for optimal emotional wellness and mental health. Right. And so today we've brought together our panel. Um, we have kind of divided the community engagement force into specific areas of focus. Um, and we wanted to give every uh, one of our advocates an opportunity to talk a little bit about their area. So I think the first person we were going to hear from is Dr. Danny Archie. Danny, you want to talk a little bit about your area? Yeah, so I am the gender and sexual diversity um, advocate, and my area is kind of focused on improving the wellness and mental health of uh, Tulane's LGBT community. Um, and so that's kind of what my area focuses, and, and we are trying to kind of seek to partner with other people on campus who also serve this community, such as the Office of General and Sexual Diversity. Um, some programs that we have this semester, um, I was on last week's Wednesday, uh, Wellbeing Wednesday, so that's on the website you can see talking about healthy relationships, specifically how um, LGBTQ uh, people have some challenges in relationships and also kind of how um, ways to kind of form those healthy relationships. Um, later on the semester, um, I think in October sometime, we'll, I'll be back on Wellbeing Wednesday to talk a little bit about kind of just the election and the stress that can result from that for people in a marginalized community like LGBT people. And so we'll kind of talk about ways to cope with that stress and kind of get through this difficult season. Um, and um, also just kind of a little preview, me and Janaki will also be kind of partnering with um, the Office of Gender and Sexual Diversity for something going on in October as well. And so um, kind of looking at the intersections between race and sex, uh, sexuality and gender. And so that's just kind of some of the things that we've got going on this semester that I'm excited about. Awesome, really exciting. And that, mm -hmm. that most recent episode of Wellbeing Wednesday is full of such valuable information so meaningful um, about relationships and, and how to have healthy relationships. So it's a really good one to check out on the website. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. And the next up I think is Jeanette. Did you wanna talk a little bit about your area of focus? Unmute yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Living in Zoom. Yes, Zoom land. Zoom land, Zoom land right? Yes. <laughs> Thank you. That's much better if they can hear yes. me. Um, so I'm Jeanette Arguello, and I'm one of I am one of the advocates uh, here at the Counseling Center, and I advocate for the Latinx community, the undocumented students, the documented students, and pretty much all immigrant students. Um, my area of focus, of course, is to 
empower students to feel like they are, it is a strong community and a support system here and not just at the counseling center, but at Tulane to create an environment where uh, they feel not just empowered, but um, uh, welcome. Uh, my area of focus, of course, is to ensure that everybody is feeling uh, legal because nobody is illegal in this world and that unity is power. So that's something that I believe is very important for us to focus as advocates, as humans, as just beings in this world. So, um, you know, it's to celebrate our, our diversity, our cultures, building, um, building strong bonds that last a lifetime because that is a time in our life uh, when we are when we are in college, when you are in college, that uh, that you do strengthen those bonds and you you create an identity of who you are and you should be proud of your heritage and of course um, you know, your families, your ancestors, and you know just your culture. So I I host a workshop series called Salud. Um, it is a place where uh, Latinx or Latinx heritage students can come and talk about it because a lot of Latinx students are very white passing and you know and then we also have an enormous community of Afro Latinx students and so it is a very diverse community so this is a space where we all feel as one um, in unity and uh, and we learn about stress reduction strategies anxiety reduction strategies uh, using a little bit of mindfulness um, and also, you know, creating rituals as, as, as a community. So that's, that's what I do. Also, I am running another workshop series called the International, for International Students, and that's Exhale, Stress, Inhale, Peace. And it is also very similar. It's more of a space for all international students of all nationalities, um, and also for students that are not here at Tulane this year. So that's something that's very important that we can't forget that there are lots of students that couldn't return. So that's another series that I'm running. Um, and in October, I will be hosting a Wellbeing Wednesday and uh, it will be focusing on knowing your rights, knowing your rights so that in the event that someone who is undocumented um, faces the authorities, that they know that they have rights and that um, the Constitution gives you those rights, mm -hmm. uh, regardless of legal status. Mm -hmm. so that's my Are you having a special guest on that one? I am. I am having a guest. His name is Gabriel Rodriguez. Mm -hmm. uh, he is a fabulous advocate. He is one of the founders of Undocu Ally here at Tulane. So we are so excited to come together and to shed focus on this area, which is so important. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, thank you, Jeanette. Mm -hmm, for sure. Um, and how about Ryan, you're next up. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Ryan Judd. I'm a social worker at the Counseling Center, and I'm also the advocate for international students. Um, I am so happy to be in this position and I'm so happy to be working with a um, panel of amazing folks that you're hearing from today. We really have some awesome, awesome talent and some awesome programming for everyone this semester. Um, in terms of international students, um, my focus and our team here, our focus is going to be on really addressing the particular sets of challenges that are very, very specific to being an international student in the university system here in the United States. Um, this is a particularly challenging time uh, for a lot of reasons. One of them being, as Jeanette was just kind of talking about with the global pandemic going on and restrictions on travel, um, people, you know, international students being all over the world, accessing classes. Um, so we are really trying to be as responsive as possible to the kind of shifting and changing needs of our international student population in these very uncertain times. Um, I am very lucky to partner with some excellent um, groups on campus. Um, chief among them is OISS, the Office for International Students and Scholars. Um, I'm also working individually with a lot of the individual student um, international groups representing different um, international students on campus, uh, different countries, different regions. Um, 
and we have a really, really excellent um, list of programs that we're going to be doing this semester. Jeanette mentioned one of them, which is the Exhale Stress Inhale Peace workshop series. That's a series of workshops um, focused on mindfulness, helping students connect with each other, um, self-care, stress reduction. Um, I'm going to be giving, um, I'm going to be doing a Wellbeing Wednesday um, kind of presentation on um, September 30th um, that is focused on um, kind of addressing the barriers to accessing mental health services and to really um, optimally utilizing mental health services for international students. So these are challenges specific to the international student community. So I really hope that um, our, our international students will tune in to that and will also be in contact with me with, about any needs that they have going forward. Awesome, we're looking Thank forward you. to that, Ryan. Yeah. Thank you for that. Um, I think I'm up next. So my role uh, on this awesome team is as the virtual programming advocate. And um, what that means Everybody is- Everybody give Shauna some shine. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for that. Yes, the yeah. glue, the glue. <laughs> Yeah, so my role is to make sure that we're getting all of this amazing expertise and talent from this, this panel and from our staff out into the community through virtual means so that our students and faculty and staff can access this information from anywhere at any time on any mobile device. Um, so I really, I just feel like my job is to kind of drive the bus that carries all this expertise and talent out into the community. Um, and then I think, Lindsay, you were going to share a little bit about your area. I'm new to self. <laughs> Hello, my name is Lindsay Suddeth, um, and I am a staff therapist here at the Counseling Center and the Assistant Director. And I am the advocate, I guess, for the, the larger Tulane community. Um, that might be touched by some type of crisis. Um, so in, in the past, um, the Counseling Center in conjunction with Student Affairs can provide on-site support um, to students, to staff, to RAs when a critical incident happens. Um, and a critical incident can be a lot of things, but historically the response is in um, lieu of a student death or a serious injury. Um, that doesn't mean that that's um, the only way that only time that we would provide um, any kind of response. I mean, any crisis that touches anybody in our Tulane community, um, in, a, in, you know, in our larger New Orleans area, you know, our country, even the world, you know. Um, but I guess in part of part of what we can do is offer these kind of postvention services. Um, to help students kind of cope, you know, help staff kind of cope, how to talk to each other about what's going on, how to grieve uh, the loss of somebody, or um, how to kind of like establish a sense of safety again um, when feeling kind of, you know, rattled to your core. Um, so we don't have any planned events, because right, because it's in response to an event, but we have an on-call person 24-7 um, that, will respond to an event that happens on campus. And yeah, our job is just to try and coordinate um, a team of folks to go out and provide whatever support is needed. Be present, provide support. Um, and that can look like a lot of things because every, every incident is very unique and very different. So our job is to show up, number one, and just be very flexible and yeah. 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 Such an important, piece of what we do at the Counseling Center. And I think it really highlights that community engagement is, is prevention, you know, proactive outreach, and that post-invention response um, to things that happen in our community. So we're so lucky to be able to, to really hold, um, hold the community on both sides of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Thank you, Lindsay, for yeah. taking that on, because that's a very important piece. Um, to be, and that's when the, the engagement really kicks in, <laughs> I Robert think, you know, is, is, you know, when students really need that support. So, yeah, yeah. so very important. So um, we also have Charlesetta here. 
um, Chozetta is our patient rep advisor. So she's going to, she advises us on all the things that making sure we don't get into any trouble while we're out here trying to uh, sling this community engagement <laughs> and that we are staying close to the procedures and processes of our offices in keeping the integrity of that. And Charles, that is also, uh, as patient rep, our first line. Yes. Hi. Um, as Janaki said, I am Chalzetta Beck, and I am the um, advocate for any student wishing to have services at the Counseling Center. So what, um, so when you call, what we do is try to dis, um, help you decide, or if you know you would like to um, see a psychologist or a psychiatrist for medication management, I'm here to help you schedule that appointment, that initial appointment. And once your appointment um, is scheduled, if you have any questions, if I'm here to support you, the student, as well as the providers mm -hmm. with any, um, any issues or anything that may, mm -hmm. any um, information that a student, anyone needs, I am here mm -hmm. to help just kind of make sure that you're, um, that you're, that you're provided the service that you mm -hmm. need. Yeah. And, that's what I'm here for anytime. And we're here. I'm here every day, Monday through Friday from 8 to 4.30. But Belinda, she's here mm -hmm. until 7. So you can contact either one of us and um, ask us any questions or and just ask for Chalzetta or Belinda. We're here every day. Thank you. Thank you, Chalzetta. That's um, critically important um, because you guys hear things that we often um, don't get. So that extra layer of support is is critical for student um, it, for student support, not just student support as you said, but for ours as well. You know, and and these are all linked to the work that we go out into the community to do, because as we're doing this work. I, ideally, students are going to come into the counseling center where they will meet you and need to have that <clears throat> level of care followed up. So thank you for that. Yeah, thank you. We couldn't do the work without your, you and Belinda um, oh, up there at the front desk for and all those calls. <laughs> mm -hmm. We're so lucky to have you. Mm -hmm. um, Janaki, we have a couple of uh, panelists who aren't here with us today, a couple of advocates. Mm -hmm. Did you want to um, share a little bit about their roles? Yeah, so uh, we have Dr. Uh, Jessica Chavez, who is our sexual trauma and eating concerns advocate. And she is, um, they're partners with the, so they partner with members of the Tulane community to address impacts of sexual violence, oppressive body ideals, and eating concerns. Um, there is an eating concerns team that she spearheads as well that meets regularly just to talk about those types of issues and how to provide solutions and programming for that. Um, these advocates, um, their goal is to really just empower um, students to find their own unique path to healing minds and bodies. And one of the things that she um, has uh, coming up is um, she's working on providing information with SAFE right now. So that's one of the main community partners around that. So basically talking to their um, student um, advocates about vicarious trauma and burnout and how to hold the container for your, yourselves through all of that, uh, because that's some very important work that students do on campus. So Dr. Chavez is all over that. Um, and so shout out to her and um, in this as well. I'm very appreciative of that. We'll um, have her as a guest uh, in October on Wellbeing yes, Wednesday. Yes, so most of us will show up on Wellbeing Wednesday for sure. <laughs> so you'll see one of us at some right. point. That's part of the, that's part of the deal. Yeah. Uh, and then we have Dr. Austin, who is the substance use and education advocate. And so they're just creating opportunities for the community to engage with um, learning about substance use on a personal level, uh, harm reduction. Um, so they're hoping to help people to recognize and understand and define, define substance use on campus and know when you're in trouble, uh, right, and where to go. Um, so they're educating them. Uh, Dr. 
um, Austin talks about using a personalized and a holistic approach and maintaining the flexibility to fit the needs of the community. So one of the things that he is doing, he's partnered with Greek Life to provide some programming around that. And also he is partnered with the recovery community uh, to provide that type of education. He also um, spearheads the basics program. So he will be working on that as well. And so I'm sure we'll hear a lot more from Dr. Austin on campus. Coming soon. <laughs> and shout out to him. Right. <laughs> and then your role as an advocate, Dr. Flint. Um, so as the racial equity advocate, essentially what we do is honor the intersections of all the students. So I will cross pollinate with pretty much everybody on here uh, <laughs> uh, to bring those, those uh, that type of programming. And so what we want to do, I, I, as I state, we want to be really um, pa I'm passionate and steadfast about addressing the needs of underrepresented students. Um, supporting their emotional well-being, providing them with safe spaces for body-mind healing, and also in this time of um, COVID-19, and also in this time of the virus of racism that is rearing its ugly head seemingly everywhere, uh, we want to be able to help students also provide uh, their uh, space for their healing and a space where they can find some type of internal peace and sanctity in the midst of all of these things that are occurring so that they can open up the spaces that they need within their bodies and their minds to be able to manage this, uh, these difficult times, but also to continue on with the work that they came here to do, which is learn. And so, yeah, so we want to make sure that any of those types of things are happening and cross-referencing with other people um, on the on in the other advocates as well to being able to making sure that we maintain that integrity in our presentations because what we you know what we really want students to know is that anyone who is coming out here should also be we have uh, a couple of trainings that are coming up that will keep us you know to kind of manage that integrity but we want to make sure that when we're out here that we're all on the same plane where that is concerned and that people aren't just feeling like i could just do whatever and and be wounding mm -hmm. and so we want to just that's the kind of work that we just want to make sure that we're maintaining the integrity of it for the because if we're calling ourselves advocates this is what we do right so yeah so that's where that lands yeah, that's wonderful we're so fortunate to have you with us in that role um and you have a well-being wednesday we well, are on well-being wednesday every I week know. My co -host. <laughs> but we're doing a, a, a an episode in this mm -hmm. in this area um partnering with um the folks over it's not called the o anymore no it's the carolyn barbara pierre center for intercultural life yeah. And um, so there's many, there's other things under there, right? right? Um, so yeah, so I will be working with, um, uh, with that group on a couple of projects, but um, across the year. So they have a rest and resilience program that is all about educating students, um, BIPOC, QT BIPOC students about emotional wellness care mental health care. And um, there's a, a whole host of other things that are happening with this group. So we're really going to be talking about things like digging into racial trauma and what it is and how to identify what types of uh, sensations and symptoms and signs that you are really um, being hijacked by your body and being overwhelmed by all this stuff that you're hearing on social media, on TV, and then following it up with strategies for healing and management through that, um, because that's a, that's a whole different um, program that's going on. Um, and it's a whole different space to be in and how to do that while you're navigating college, <laughs> you know, because the whole point is getting you to the point where you can really act as your own container and um, and being able to get through this, this school, you know, and, and studies and coursework and all of those real practical things that we do every day that students do every day. Yeah, so, so much to manage as, as students in, in this time, but um, students from marginalized communities, I think, have even, you know, obviously more to manage and more, um, more emotional content and, and more, more healing and, and creating those spaces, I think, is so vital mm -hmm. and so important. Mm -hmm. It really is. And using the 
uh, strategies that are consistent with the culture and centering the culture of those groups. Um, you know, so doing ancestral work. Um, and that's something that I have long been an, an advocate for, right? Um, and has, and, and has, it has been really powerful with, with students who really um, BIPOC, uh, QT BIPOC students, uh, when you come from that perspective and consider their whole person and all of their intersections, you know, the ritual of healing, there is joy in it. And so you just have to, you know, really um, continue that, that voice, continue to center the people. And um, that's something that I'm just very passionate about doing. So that's what I'm out there doing. Beautiful thing. As I look at this screen with, you know, with all of these folks and the, and the few that um, aren't, aren't here with us, I just think how fortunate we are to have this, um, this clinic and the, the colleagues that we have here at the Counseling Center. Mm -hmm. Yes, I think everybody hit the ground running, came up with their own programming um, content and just got it in. I mean, I, I looked over the uh, workshops and uh, seminars that we're doing. We have like 15 scheduled seminars to date across several different um, uh, campus partners on campus. And so we're out here. We're, we're all over this thing. <laughs> so yeah, so and so from month to month, you'll be seeing us. And then we have Wellbeing Wednesday, which is our key driver of content. So we'll be doing webcasts and podcasts. We just did a parent one yesterday, um, one that was just directed to parents with our center's director. So it's, you know, so yeah, we're here. We're doing the work. Yeah. Um, so let's take a minute and maybe talk about ways that people can access all of these wonderful advocates and, and um, get some of this content. Let me share my screen. Um, so there's a web page just for community engagement um, at campushealth.tulane.edu slash counseling center slash community engagement. On that page, you can find all this information that we've been talking about. You can find um, the bios of each of our advocates and you can find um, a request form uh, if you're interested in uh, requesting specific content, you can submit that through the website. Just want to remind everybody that the clinic relocated over the summer. Um, and so we are now in the Dybul complex on the first floor. The entrance is on the side of the building near the Riley Center. Beautiful new clinic space. Uh, and also to remind everyone that the center now has um, extended hours. Um, Monday through Thursday uh, appointments uh, up till 7 p.m. and on Friday until 5. And so we're, we're really doing our best to create as much accessibility as we can so that students can access services at the Counseling Center. Um, at, and at just time. to add that we're doing that same day consult. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Which <Right>. everybody loves. <laughs> the students <Yeah>. love it. <laughs> they do. And um, so to schedule an appointment with us now is, um, is a same day endeavor. And um, these two lovely ladies, you met Charles Etta already on this presentation. Then uh, the other photo is Belinda. They uh, answer the phone. And if you call, in most cases, you'll be scheduled that same day with one of our clinicians so that you can learn about services and have a plan and, and know, know what's gonna happen. And all those sessions are conducted via Zoom for everyone's safety and uh, so that we don't have to wear masks. We can see each other's faces and, and have a, an interaction in that way. I never um, leave Wellbeing Wednesday without something funny or adorable. And so I went with Kid President today. Um, I feel like, you know, it's September and our students um, are probably starting to really feel like, like, okay, we're here and classes are underway and we're doing this thing. And, um, so just kind of a, a keep it up and, and, you know, keep going, I think, is what I wanted to share with this slide. Um, before we wrap up, is there anything anybody else would like to say or share for our students or anything about, you know, uh, community engagement, anything like that that we want to put out there uh, for anyone who's listening or watching? 
everyone said everything they had to say. <laughs> really? <laughs> Well, it's always a pleasure to see all of you, even if it's on the rectangles of Zoom in Zoom land. Um, I feel so grateful to everyone's um, work and effort, and, um, and I'm always grateful to co-host this show with you, Janaki. So I'm glad that, that we were here again on Wednesday, and we will um, be back next Wednesday. And keep, uh, keep tuning in for those recorded episodes. Follow Campus Health on social media so that you can always be reminded when a new episode is released. Uh, and with that, I think we will say goodbye. Yes. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Janaki. <laughs> be well. <laughs> <laughs>